Hi, I'm Laura Allen with Gray Water Action, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do the annual maintenance on a branch drain system. If you have a three-way diverter valve in your system, it's a good idea to switch it to the sewer or septic at least once a year. We're going to be doing the maintenance in the landscape. This system has four outlets. It's irrigating these fruit trees in front of the building. And I have my plot plan, so I know exactly where the gray water is coming out. And I'm going to be going to each of the outlets and checking to make sure that the outlet is unobstructed and the water is infiltrating well into the mulch. I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for the location where the gray water comes out, totally free of obstructions, and it has room for the water to flow through the air before it lands into the wood chips. That air gap prevents roots from growing back up into the pipe. So I'm going to be removing the lid of these irrigation valve boxes and I'm going to be checking for air inside and then underneath I'm going to be looking for the wood chips. If they have decomposed or if there are obstructions, if soil has gotten in or organic matter is decomposed, I'm just going to remove that either with a trowel or with a shovel and fill it back in with fresh wood chips. So we'll get started. So I'm going to check the first outlet. So looking in, there is, I see an air gap and then I see soil. So the wood chips have started to decompose and so I'm going to just remove some of that soil with my trowel. Just a side note, this system is fairly young and this uh, landscape is sandy loam soil. So it has a very kind of quickly draining soil. So my total basin is relatively small. Your basin might be a lot bigger than this. And even if it is, you probably won't need to do maintenance other than in the general like foot or two area around your outlet, which is actually the total diameter of my basin. So I'm going to just dig inside, remove some of this soil. It's nice compost. It's good for the garden. And I'll just remove it until I have enough room to add my layer of wood chips. This will give it a good filter. And I'll check and make sure. So I have a couple inches of wood chips. I have a seven inch drop, that's plenty. So this outlet looks good too. So all of these three outlets, they have a nice air gap, they have the wood chips, um, the water's flowing really well. I don't need to do any maintenance on them. In your system, you might need to be digging out every single one of your outlets. It, it depends on how old your system is and how frequently you do the maintenance, as well as how large your wood chips are. The larger they are, the longer they last before they decompose. Every couple of years, I'll need to do a little bigger of a maintenance job. We'll actually have to dig out all around this outlet with the shovel because all, my whole basin will have decomposed by then. I won't have to dig out my entire basin, but I will need to do a bigger area around the outlet. Um, so now I'm done checking the outlet. The last thing that I want to do is flow water through the system and make sure that it's coming out evenly. And hopefully it is because if you have to adjust a branch drain system, it's a lot of work. So let's find out. So I'm going to open up the flow splitter. This is where the water is divided and this is a good place to check. See how water's flowing. This has a little clean out in it and it looks good in there. There's no obstructions. I see the water flowing. Let's check the outlets. It's coming out there. It's coming out there. I'll check the other two. That one looks good. Luckily, the system was in tune, so that means the water was flowing evenly, so I don't need to make any adjustments. Like I mentioned before, it's a lot of work to adjust a branch drain system. I'll show you what to do in case you find that you're getting more flow in one outlet and less in another. So you have to uncover your flow splitters. Probably you put them in a valve box or some kind of enclosure. If you just buried them in the ground, you're going to have to find them and dig them up. This one is in um, a little part of a valve box. 
and you're going to want to check the level. So remember that the flow splitters should be totally straight and level and that gets the even split to both of the lines. If you check and you find that your flow splitters have kind of drifted to one side because maybe the soil was soft, it wasn't compacted under the pipe and over time it settled, then you're going to need to re dig out that pipe and readjust the system. And once you can access it, you're going to place your level on the flow splitter and make sure this is totally level. If it's not level, you're going to need to adjust this angle from where the pipe comes in. If you left this joint unglued, then it's pretty easy to do that. You can just dig around and then re-angle re it a little bit. If you did glue this joint, you're going to need to cut here and use a coupling to connect it again and leave one side of your coupling unglued so you have this flexibility. If that doesn't solve your problem, you are going to need to dig out more of your system and check this angle of the pipes coming out. This angle, excuse me, this pipe should have a slightly downward angle of at least 2% grade. And to, to re-dig and re-angle these pipes is a lot of work, but that's what's necessary if your whole system came out of alignment. One way to help prevent this from happening is you can add short pieces of rebar with wire to wrap and hold firmly key joints. Um, this is a good joint or the, the pipes coming out are other good joints, so you might want to do that too. So now your system is all in alignment and you can test it again and close everything up and you're done. So I checked all my outlets, I've, all the flows are even, I just need to close up the lids and I'm all done for the year.